course, the organized labor comprising the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress on Friday boycotted an emergency meeting with the federal government that was scheduled for 3 p.m. at the presidential villa Abuja. The federal government had called an emergency meeting with the leaders of the organized labor at the conference room of the office of the president's chief of staff. Among other goals, Friday's meeting was meant to talk uh, the labor movement out of its planned nationwide strike from Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Now, let's get the view of the maestro on this issue. Um, while the NLC is insisting on going on strike, the federal government has faulted a notice of strike action by the Nigeria Labor Congress, describing it as illegal and in contempt of court. What do you think? For me, um, the, the best thing for government to do is not simply to think that it can stop or that it should stop NLC from going on strike um, using the courts. I think it is more uh, long-lasting and it will help foster industrial relations if the issues involved are trashed out uh, between the NLC, the TUC, and the federal government. I do not believe in this idea of simply um, pointing at uh, a court uh, a restraining order, you know, by the court. Because at the end of the day, you still have to engage them over these issues. I do not think that... Uh, Trying to use the court is um, is the right strategy, and in the past, at least during the Osho Mole era, we saw uh, government try to use the industrial court, and uh, it didn't work because Osho Mole and his people proceeded with the strike in spite of uh, the attempts to use the. Um, the industrial courts to stop them from going on strike. Strike is uh, one of the weapons guaranteed by law that the labor unions can use to press uh, for governments to do something about their demands. So I don't think that in the final analysis, you'll be able to stop the NLC, the TUC, from going on strike. It is the, there has to be a conversation around the demands, around what labor is talking about. So for me, I don't believe in simply um, uh, threatening to file contempt charges against them. Because this kind of, uh, whether it's a in, uh, perpetual injunction that the government is talking about or simply a restraining order, for me, that is not the, the way to go. Find, engage labor, call them into a room, make promises to them, uh, uh, put timelines to these promises. That is reassuring. It will be reassuring not just to labor, but to the rest of us. Because whether we like it or not, the removal of uh, fuel subsidy, you know, which moved the uh, petrol price uh, from less than, uh, 200, um, less than 200 naira per liter to uh, a little over 500, and then to 600, uh, 600, 600, Plus, depending on where you are in the country, where you are buying from, has inflicted pains on Nigerians, and we are all um, we are all victims. It's not like oh, this is limited to just a category of Nigerians. There is no Nigerian that is not affected by the increase in fuel uh, prices. And a good number of us demanded that the um, that the fuel subsidy should go. I remember Peter Obi 
even uh, describing it as organized crime. So removing first subsidy is not the crime. What is not the crime because all the all the uh, presidential candidates of the major parties promised to remove first subsidy. Now it is how government has tried to ease the pain that is the issue. Many people are not convinced that government has done enough. Many people are convinced that the government can do a lot better than it is doing at this time. This is the time for the governors of all the states to meet with the federal government and begin to talk, have some conversation around the new minimum wage and around how we can cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy on the poorest of the poor in our country. If MBS says about 170 million Nigerians are multidimensionally poor, the removal of subsidy must have pushed uh, several more millions of Nigerians uh, down uh, the poverty pit. So there's a need to do something and do something quickly. There is so much pain in the land. There is, and there is anger too. Government must not allow the strike to take place. Whatever government can do to stop the strike, it has to do it. President Tinobu, uh, hopefully will be addressing Nigerians on, on, uh, on uh, October 1. That is an opportunity for him to lay down what he wants to do, you know, to ease the pain, to improve the economy, and put timelines. Those timelines will reassure people that, look, this is indeed uh, a destination, that we are heading somewhere. But to not do that is inexcusable. So now I've heard of uh, some of the unions that are prepared to go on strike at this time. Uh, no Peng, no B5, which is the Union of Bank Workers. Um, aviation workers, they have also said that they will go on strike, which means that airports uh, will be shut down. Now, if No Peng goes on strike, then we are, we are talking about fuel scarcity, which will cripple the country. Of course, the uh, umbrella union of health workers in the country has also uh, vowed to go on strike. You know, they've, they've, uh, they've said that they will join uh, the strike. Coming at a time when Nigerians are really going through extreme pain, I don't think government should allow this strike to happen. They, they should do whatever they can do. The president has to intervene. It's not uh, simply the job of the minister. You know, the president has to come in and meet with uh, labor. I know that in the past, we've successfully stopped strikes at the last minute. But labor needs to see, to see steps being taken by government to uh, suggest that it is really serious before it can. Uh, change his mind about uh, this strike. No one is saying that, oh, the strike will be successful or it will not be successful, because even the NURTW have said they will not join uh, the strike. But we don't even want it to happen. Seeing what happened, what happened to us with NSAS, no one can say with certainty where this um, indefinite strike will lead us, because if it inflicts too much pains on Nigerians, there's no way that some of our people will not uh, get violent. And that is not what we want to see. That's not what we want to see. So there's a need to engage labor, find a way to engage labor at the last minute so that this strike uh, doesn't happen. Because from what I've seen, even some of the labor unions that in the past sat on the fence on matters like this. They are all saying that they, they, they want to get involved this, this time. They want to be part of the strike and they are already mobilizing zonal coordinators, chairmen, 
uh, secretaries of unit branches to be ready to go on strike. And uh, it appears that Ajero and Co. do not want to listen because they stayed away from the meeting that government called on Friday. Uh, to need lecture from anyone on national interest, national security, or preservation of our sovereignty. I mean, these are angry words suggesting uh, their level of frustration uh, with the way uh, the matter of uh, uh, the matter of easing the pains inflicted by uh, subsidy remover uh, has been handled by the government. So, what I would say is it is still possible for an indefinite strike not to happen. But it's up to the president to take decisive steps at this time. Let the president know that uh, less than six months into his administration, this sort of thing shouldn't be happening. And um, the, the truth is, the president himself said that this is this is the time for us to come up with a living wage. He has to live up to his word. He has to rally governors and begin to work frenetically on the new minimum wage. You know, these are the kinds of moves that we show uh, labor, that government is serious, and then the issue of palliative gets, um, gets NLC involved, show signs that you want to bring in vehicles to ease the transportation pains of Nigerians, because that is where people are feeling the pain uh, the most, that apart from uh, high food prices. People need to move around to go and work. So the, the, the transport costs are killing our people. So government needs to bring in uh, buses, you know, that will be a compressed natural gas uh, uh, fired, you know, instead of the uh, gasoline fired engines. We need to have the CNG fired engines for buses and for Nigerians who want to convert their vehicles to CNG, government needs to find a way to make sure that they can help those people uh, achieve that conversion at a very cheap rate. This will definitely ease the pains on so many people. I know that uh, it won't totally ease the pain, uh, it won't totally uh, remove the pain, but it will go a long way. So. These are steps that government can take at this time. It should not allow this strike to happen because if it happens, no one can say where uh, it will all end.